Listeners allow the state machine to listen for user interactions. So things like mouse clicks or mouse movements. Let's explore setting up some simple listeners. The listener panel is located to the left of the graph. You'll notice that it looks very similar to the inputs panel. There's two paths we can go down to create a listener. Now, as you'll see here on the stage, I have two different rectangles. Now, if we select the blue rectangle, let's say, and then go down and hit the plus button in the listeners panel, you'll see that our listener appears and it says rectangle blue. Now, if we go over to the inspector, you can see all the properties that we can customize. The other way to create a listener is to make sure that you don't have anything selected and then we can create a new listener. Now you'll see that this says listener one. In this case, our listener doesn't have a target. You can see right here that our target's blank. So if we click on this button, now we'll be able to say, okay, this red rectangle is now the target of the listener. You can see that after we've selected that, the name pops up there in the target. Now to delete a listener, we can either right click and use the delete option, or we can hold alt and we'll have our X button show up and that we can use to remove the listener. Now let's create a listener using the red square as our target. So we can select the red square and hit the plus button. And you can see that we have that red rectangle listener now and its target is set to the red rectangle. So the first option defines the target. And then below that, we're gonna be defining the type of action that we're listening for. So pointer enter is when our pointer enters the target area. Pointer exit is when our pointer exits the target area. Pointer down is when we down click on the target area. Pointer up is when we up click on it. And then pointer move is when the pointer is moving within the target area. For this listener, let's choose pointer enter. Now we can set a selected input if we want. Uh, you'll see that we don't actually have anything in there and that's because our state machine doesn't have any inputs defined. So let's go ahead and define one and let's go ahead and select a number, a Boolean and a trigger. We can use these to experiment with all the different inputs we can set. So now we can go back and select our listener and we can set our different inputs. Let's start by selecting the Boolean. Now in this case, we're saying that when our pointer enters the red rectangle, set Boolean one to true. So when we play the state machine, you'll see that our Boolean is false. But now if we mouse over the red square, you'll see that the Boolean is true. Let's go ahead and stop the state machine. And to make this a little more interesting, we're gonna add a new listener so that the red rectangle listens for when the mouse leaves. So we'll go in and hit that plus button with the red rectangle selected. You can see that that new listener has been added to our listeners panel, and now we need to configure it. So when the pointer exits, let's go ahead and set that Boolean to false. Let's also rename our listeners so they're easier to uh, distinguish. So this first one, we're gonna make sure that we label it exit. And then the first one, we're gonna make sure that we label it enter. So now we have our two different distinct listeners. The first one changes our Boolean to false when our mouse exits, and the other changes that Boolean to true when the mouse enters. So let's test this out. We've got our state machine playing, our Boolean is currently false, and we mouse over our rectangle, it's true, and when we leave, it's false again. As you can imagine, this would be a great way to set up a hover interaction. Now let's add some listeners that allow us to change our number value depending on which rectangle we enter. Let's use our first listener here. And instead of changing the Boolean, we can actually add an additional uh, input change. Now with this input change, we're gonna select our number input and then let's define what we want it to change to. Now let's select the second rectangle and add a new listener and then we can rename it. Now let's go and configure the listener. So again, let's change the number input and this time let's change it to two. And if we play the state machine, let's pay attention to the inputs and see how they change. Now, it's important to remember that although we can change multiple inputs with a single uh, listener, we'll need multiple listeners to listen for different actions, such as these two that listen for both the enter and exit that can change the different inputs. 
There are additional actions such as align target that we'll explore in another video. Now to delete properties out of a listener, we'll do the same thing that we did in the listeners panel. We can either right click and use the delete option, or we can hold down the alt button and use the X button. Let's configure one last listener to fire our trigger when we, for example, click on the blue square. So with the blue square selected, let's create a new listener and change the listener type to a pointer down listener. And now let's select our uh, trigger input, play the state machine, and then watch the trigger as we click on our uh, blue um, rectangle. You can see that both in the um, inputs panel and over there in our console that our trigger is actually firing. Now the console is really handy to use whenever you want to see how your inputs are reacting to all your listeners.